They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating they're eating the pets. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have a to meme. create right. stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana. Because you just said that you're creating a story. We ought to be talking about public policy. That's just a small fraction of the defamatory lies that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have been propagating about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio. And let me just say this. The requirements for what's legally considered to be defamation in the United States are very high. But J.D. Vance literally admitting on national television that he creates stories to raise the salience of issues about immigrants, that obviously meets the criteria for defamation. And in that same clip, he demonstrated his intent to defame them as well, which is another requirement for defamation in the United States. Now, on top of that, he has purposefully called Haitian migrants illegal when they are, in fact, here legally. And when he was asked about that by a Politico reporter at a rally, he made it very clear he doesn't care about the facts. He's going to keep calling them illegal anyways. Now, the media loves to say that the Haitian migrants Hundreds of thousands of them, by the way, 20,000 in Springfield, but hundreds of thousands of them all across our country, they are here legally. And what they mean is that Kamala Harris used two separate programs, mass parole and temporary protective status. She used two programs to wave a wand and to say, we're not going to deport those people here. Well, if Kamala Harris waves the wand illegally and says these people are now here legally, I'm still going to call them an illegal alien. An illegal action from Kamala Harris does not make an alien legal. J.D. Vance is utterly despicable. He admitted multiple times now that he is deliberately lying about Haitian immigrants. And even though Republicans say that they're not against legal immigration, Trump is threatening to deport these legal immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, anyway. And to make matters even worse, he's using the bullshit that he and his running mate made up about them as a justification for their potential deportation in the event they get elected. It couldn't get more despicable than that. And these aren't just small lies that they're making up. These are massive lies that have enormous consequences. These lies are ruining people's lives in Springfield, Ohio, as my friend and leftist mafia co-host Rebecca Azor put it. Haitian Americans are saying that they're now fearing for their lives right now because of Donald Trump and J.D. Vance's false rhetoric. OK, xenophobia has gone up like nobody's business. And now Springfield, Ohio, which Haitians, 15,000 Haitians that have moved there have revived this little city. And now those same Haitians are under attack. And now Haitians are fearing for their lives in this city right now. They can't take their kids to school. There are reports that Haitians couldn't take their kids to school following these claims. Haitians are being attacked in Springfield, Ohio, as we speak. And she's absolutely right about that. There's literally been dozens of bomb threats, in fact, more than 30, as a direct result of the lies being spread by Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. This is quintessential stochastic terrorism, and I'll link you to Rebecca's full video below so that way you can watch it, and I would highly encourage that because what she says is so important because she gives you the context that we all don't know about as Americans, and she says this as a Haitian immigrant herself and explains how she was literally bullied as a kid because of this lie about Haitians eating pets. So these defamatory lies being spread by Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they're not just xenophobic and racist. They are downright dangerous, which is why a Haitian nonprofit group called the Haitian Bridge Alliance filed criminal charges against Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, claiming they're responsible for disrupting public service, making false alarms, committing telecommunications harassment, committing aggravated menacing, and violating the prohibition against complicity. So they're trying to hold Trump accountable for these dangerous lies, and a lot of conservatives, I'm assuming, scoffed at these charges, but one in particular decided to use this opportunity to go full KKK in response. And I don't really know how else to describe it. He just went mask off, or should I say hood off. So in a now deleted tweet by Republican Congressman Clay Higgins, he wrote, LOL, these Haitians are wild, eating pets, voodoo, nastiest country in the Western hemisphere, cults, slapstick gangsters, but damned if they don't feel all sophisticated now, filing charges against our president and VP. All these thugs better get their mind right and their ass out of our country before January 20th. Yeah, and just to remind you, a sitting member of Congress made this tweet. What the fuck? 
Like, it's not surprising for sure, but still the fact that they're so open with their racism now, the fact that they're so emboldened to say things like this publicly, it's disturbing. He's doubling down on the lies about Haitian immigrants. He's calling them slapstick gangsters. He's calling them thugs, which we all know Republicans use as a synonym for the N-word. He also called Haiti the nastiest country in the Western Hemisphere. And then to make matters worse, he ended that tweet with a presumed threat. Again, this community is already facing threats of violence, hence why they felt compelled to file those charges in the first place. But this vile piece of shit is threatening to make their lives even worse if Trump is elected. Why? Because they dared to hold Trump and his running mate accountable because he's been lying nonstop about their community. I mean, there just aren't words to describe how disgusting this person is. Now, the backlash was swift and severe. Lots of Democrats immediately condemned him, both online and in person. But Mike Johnson's reaction to this kind of shows you why this type of racism is so common in the Republican Party. It's because they've normalized it and leadership lets them get away with it. Get a load of this horseshit. Clay Higgins is a dear friend of mine and a colleague from Louisiana and a, a, a very uh, frank and outspoken person. He's also a very principled man. And uh, I think he tweeted, I, I didn't even see it, but he tweeted something today about Haitians and uh, he was, he was, uh, he was, he, he was approached. By January 20th okay. That they were well, look, he was approached on the floor by colleagues who said that was offensive. He went to the back. I just talked to him about it. He said he went to the back and he prayed about it and he regretted it and he pulled the post down. That's what you want a gentleman to do. I'm sure he probably regrets some of the language he used, but, um, you know, we move forward. We believe in redemption around here. You know, I wonder if you took Clay Higgins tweet and you replaced Haitian with Christian, would he keep that same energy? Because something tells me he wouldn't. He'd have a completely different standard for somebody who said something about a community that he cares about. But it's cool because Clay Higgins uh, prayed about it. And that's apparently supposed to be good enough, even though he just incited more harassment and potentially violence against this community that is already under attack because of your party. Do we even get a follow-up prayer from Higgins where he asks God to protect the Haitians that he just put at risk? Do we even get that? Of course not, because Republicans do not hold themselves to the same standard that they expect Democrats to be held to. For example, Trump raised the specter of Hillary Clinton getting assassinated in 2016, saying that the Second Amendment people could do something about her if she wanted to go after their guns. He also joked about Paul Pelosi getting bludgeoned with a hammer. But yet Democrats correctly call him a threat to democracy after he literally tried to steal the last election and is working to steal the current election. And how does he respond? Well, he blames the assassination attempts on their rhetoric. See, their rhetoric, even though it's not incendiary and it's objectively true, leads to violence. But his rhetoric, even though it's bullshit, doesn't matter if it leads to violence because he's Donald Trump. He can do what he wants. He is incapable of seeing how his outrageous lies about Haitian immigrants incites harassment and violence against them. He's incapable of seeing that. And even if he could see that, if he had the brain cells that allowed him to see that cause equals effect in this situation, he wouldn't care because this man is a fucking racist. And it's just so infuriating. But thankfully, Democrats do seem to want to at least try to hold them accountable. But Stephen Horsford, who is the uh, Democratic member of the House, who tried to introduce a resolution to censure Higgins, which is the right course of action for the time being. Uh, he tried to do that and then watch what happened. I ask unanimous consent to accept my motion to censor Representative Clay Higgins for violating Rule 9 by bringing discredit and disgrace to the House of Representatives. An objection is heard. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana seek recognition? First of all, the tweet has been deleted already and removed, but I object, to, what purpose I object the to the motion. And if we want to go suspend. through every comment will tweet suspend. from the other side, we'll be happy to do it. Gentleman has and not been recognized. Be appalled. I mean, they can't even pretend to not be racist during an election year when it would behoove them to do so. Yet this party is still politically viable somehow. It doesn't make sense. In a sane world, they would have no chance ever in any election. 
even with our fucked electoral system. But here we are. And that's not to say that I agree with everything that Democrats do, because you all know I have my criticisms of Democrats. There's a plethora of them. But this party is so off the rails, so extreme, so outside the norm of what is expected of a normal and sane political party, comparatively speaking, that they should never, ever be able to win any election. But they do. And the sad part is that a lot, a lot of Americans will hear that rhetoric and they'll cheer it on because they're as racist as Republicans. So this is disgusting, but I mean, it's par for the course. This party is a racist party, but um, they're just kind of going hood off these days. Clay Higgins is just saying the quiet part loud. And you know, when people tell you who they are, you should believe them. Where there's glue, mama. you see them all the time. I mean, it's constant. Mama. My children will be like, Mama, glue, 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 glue. I turn on mama. TV, there's glue in the background. Every TV show, news media, why? Glue, 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 gl